I used to be a professional gamer. What I'm going to share with you today is how I went from just a casual player to a professional. And I'll give you more than five tips that will help you improve immediately and maybe even go pro. There was a time when I was one of the best players in the world in Team Fortress 2. Don't let that put you off, I'm talking about the 6v6 game mode, which has a pretty massive skill ceiling. The knowledge I'm going to bestow to you in this video will at least help you massively improve in your chosen game, unless it's chess. Now if you do make it as a professional gamer because of this very video, you agree to give me 10% of all your future earnings, thank you very much. So let's start, and this first one can give you the most immediate improvement. A common issue I find is that a lot of people get trapped in the constant grind phase where they just play ranked over and over again and their improvement plateaus. Some do practice but in the case of first person shooters at least, they normally stick to just aim training. There's nothing wrong with that but aim can only get you so far and I'm definitely talking from experience here. When I started to put more effort into becoming a better player I focused on improving the quality of practice and making sure I had a more varied way of practicing. I spent time practicing regular mechanics that are outside of just aiming, because at the time I had done my aim training and was fragging like a beast. But that's just one part of the game. For you, it could be things like movement techniques, spray control, clearing angles, lineups, etc. In every game, there's loads of examples and there's a load of different mechanics that will help you get over that next step. If you want to significantly improve, you just have to understand you have to practice the boring stuff to get better. When I wanted to massively improve in TF2, pretty much most of my time was spent watching demos of other players, or VODs, if the developer of the game that you play is a joke. I guess you could watch streams as well. I would watch demos of players that played the same role and some that played completely different classes to me. You end up finding interesting basic habits that other players have that you can pick up on and implement yourself, and also a bit of inside knowledge about what players in different roles tend to do. I found as well I was able to find really small tricks that I could easily implement that massively helped me just get a minor benefit in game. This is probably the part that played a huge role in how I improved and also how I didn't improve. There is always room for improvement and there will be very few times when you actually play perfectly. It's important to reflect on yourself as an individual instead of pointing fingers at others. The way I think of it is that if I'm overperforming in a game, getting loads of kills, top damage, etc, and I look down or berate the other players for not playing as well as me, that's not carrying the team, that's just leaving them behind. A lot of players, myself included, will just look at the scoreboard to see that they're on top with damage, KDA, ADR, or whatever metric your game has, and oftentimes I'd think that I'd be blame free. Don't do that and take it from me. Nobody likes playing with people that behave that way and having the attitude doesn't help you improve. But it is okay to think I played well though. We aren't looking to be too hard on ourselves, but think of it more as I played well and I could have done something better. This is my favorite because it's probably one of the things that has consistently held me back in improving and definitely still does today and that is swallowing your pride. I include this because I often come across players that think the exact same way that I do. So it's not just me, thankfully. Basically just use the tools that are given to you. I'm talking about guns, classes, abilities that are overpowered or deemed as broken, especially if you're wanting to rank up or improve. I always had this sense of pride that I didn't need to use the overpowered stuff to win because I always thought that I was better than that. But now I think, like really? Do other professional players avoid using broken classes, weapons or abilities out of principle? Of course not, they're not going to care if they win. Don't deliberately make the game harder for yourself just because you feel that you are better than them. There's been so many cases when I had refused to use weapons, unlocks, heroes because I felt like I could win without them. Don't grind just for the sake of it. First, if there is ever a point when you are grinding and you find yourself getting frustrated, just stop playing. Just take a break. 
or practice something else for a bit. Use an aim trainer, practice flicking, movement abilities, absolutely anything. Anything that isn't mindlessly queuing for another game and risk getting frustrated. I personally think that mindlessly grinding is just going to give you no benefits because you just end up picking up bad habits and bad attitudes. So if you are going to grind, make sure you're adding quality into that grind. A mistake I make is that I'll play Apex, I want to have a good time, I'll grind ranked for a few hours, but I won't use my microphone or anything. I'll go in with a minimum amount of effort, which will increase the chances of low quality games, which will then in turn increase the chances of being frustrated and so on. Give yourself the chance for enjoyment, make sure that you use a microphone or make an effort to communicate. Go in with the mindset to improve. You want to make sure that you're engaged when you grind so that when you're done there's an opportunity to self-reflect and learn. And most importantly it stops you from getting trapped in that mindlessly grinding mentality. Because from my experience, that's when you are more likely to end up getting frustrated whilst playing and you just end up making no progress. Because you have literally just switched off and you're just going through the motions. It's important to add time scales into this as well because when I say short term, I mean weeks. Long term would be maybe over four months. Esports is constantly changing and the games we're playing as well are constantly being updated and changed. So a long term goal of years isn't that realistic for everyone. But this is where you want to give yourself something to work towards. I suggest doing this at the end once you have an understanding and a commitment of what you need to improve. Set a short term goal like above if you're going to grind ranked make sure you are engaged in every match that you play then apply a goal with that for example gain a certain amount of elo but also in those short term goals add a practice routine so before you queue up in ranked start by practicing movement techniques spray control etc then set a long term goal what rank you want to be on for a few months finding a competitive team to play in tournaments with. Use your short term goals to help achieve the long term. Don't just be like I want to hit top 500 in 6 months and your short term goal is just to gain elo every time you play because that's honestly not going to help you get better. Make sure there are skills that you are learning on the way to that long term goal because that's what makes the difference between a good player and a professional player. A lot of various esport titles these days have so many mechanics and most professional players can just do them without even thinking. And that's the level that you need to get to to become one of the best. And that's where having goals and targets come together to help you achieve that. I had incorporated all of those things into my game over the years when I played Team Fortress 2 and it took me from being average to one of the best players. But honestly though the main reason why I'm sharing this with you is just because I've, I've had enough of hard stock goal players in my games just ruining it because they're bad. But you can't be a pro gamer without the correct equipment. That's why there's a video on screen now that should get you started.